Welcome to Comics on Parole. My name is Dan Glazer. Is there an echo in here? Anyway, how are you? Well, I'm doing well. Listen, we, we have a big show here with some big comic stars in the studio. And But before we get started, how are you doing, Vanessa? I am doing very, You're giving very us the duck extremely lips? well. Mm-hmm. Anyway, what, Vanessa's here to make a few announcements, as she usually does. Take it away. Yes, yes. I'm going to keep it very, very, very... We're getting, definitely getting a little bit. There's a little bit of echo. But, um, mm-hmm. All right, guys. So, quick, a few amazing events coming up. Um, December 3rd is our finals for Sing for Your Supper Karaoke at G's Midtown. That's Wednesday night. Show kicks off at 10 p.m. and goes until 2 a.m. I do a regular karaoke show there uh, every Sunday starting at 5.30 p.m. until 12 and then of course Wednesdays from 10 to 2 so again December 3rd is the sing-off for the Sing for Your Supper karaoke. December 10th at G's uh, Midtown and 10th and Piedmont we are celebrating our birthday which means all menu items are half off all day on that Wednesday December 10th and then the biggest event of the year for me thus far is the Toys for Tots Jingle Mingle which is slated to start or to start to happen on December 20th and that's going to doors open at 8 p.m. Um, I will have ticket information on my website as of tomorrow we had 2400 people last year we're expecting at least that many and probably closer to 3000 this year and last year we were um, officially denoted as the largest single night fundraiser for Toys for Tots in the nation so guys you really want to come out you don't want to miss this event and where do they see your schedule? The schedule, the schedule will be on my website, www.audioprisment.com. That's A-U-D-I-O-P-R-I-S-M-E-N-T. Okay, very good. I went to a Halloween party. It was a lot of fun. So anyway, thank you so much, Vanessa. Okay. And now we want to uh, play a brief video of the first comic coming up. Now, this young comic I'm bringing to the stage is a comedian that has been in business for 20 years. His act is derived from growing up poor, divorced, and in the U.S. Air Force partying women, infomercials, sports, and more. He has performed all over the U.S., Canada, and the Bahamas. He also works in country clubs all over the U.S. He has done special events such as opening up for Huey Lewis and the News. This comedian is also a philosopher. He's written two books. He also hosts his own radio program called the BTS Radio Show. Get on over here. I want to welcome to the Parole Desk. Brian T. Shirley. Thank you, Dan. Oh, yeah. VIP. You sound like a professional. I'm scared. Though. Brian and I were just, uh, Brian did a uh, show at Jerry Farber's this Saturday, so I, he, I had the honor of hosting for him, and it was a lot of fun. It was, I really enjoyed it. Not only that, but I had to pinch myself, because Jerry Farber, a legend in comedy, opened the show for both of us. Yes, he did. Yes. <laughs> He's just sitting there going, here's Jerry Farber opening my show. Oh, my goodness. And by the way, Jerry Farber's brother is Barry Farber, Barry Farber, who was a big talk show host and was on television and they just put him in the Radio Hall of Fame. If you Google Barry Farber, you'll see him on the show To Tell the Truth, which is in the 60s, and yeah. the Beatles actually called him up and sang uh, Waltzy Matilda, Matilda to him. Really? On YouTube, yeah. So well, let's talk about you. Wow. Now, you were, were you always comical when you were young? You know, I uh, was kind of introverted, but uh, I was introverted, but yet whenever oral reports came out, uh, for some reason, I loved that. One-on-one, I was tough, talking with other kids one-on-one right. on one, I was shy yeah. and nervous but if it came like a, and like I said an oral report man other kids were dreading and I was like you, why? You like being in front of people? <laughs> I loved being up in front of people now one-on-one on one, and I'm still that way that recognition of, now you, know, you went into the Air Force 
Yeah. Okay. And will you f you look very comical? Let me before we should let's really? show a picture of uh, <laughs> of this young man in the Air Force. How old were you in this picture? Look uh, how skinny he is. I believe I was twenty two or twenty two. Now you look like you were comical. Really? Were you comical in the Air yeah, Force? Yeah, I actually when they had a squad squadron function or something. Uh, I was the guy that came to to either write some bits for the little production they were doing. Yeah. Or, you know, one time a guy took pictures of people and did a slideshow. Right. And he came to me to put captions. And then finally he said, oh, hell, you just read them. Because, you know, when I was writing them, I was in the voice inflection and everything. Yeah. So I kind of taught myself to do comedy in yeah. that vein and then learned later on when I did Well, you know, Jerry Farber, if you ask someone how long have you done comedy, and you've done it 20 years? Uh, about 22. You've really done it longer than that. Probably 20, yeah, 30 I years. Mean, you, if, uh, I'm counting from when I started a workshop till now. And really, I wrote stuff as a kid, stories and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, some of them are online now that I've actually... You know, went back and got. Oh, you're doing short stories and stuff now. Yeah, and some of the characters and stuff I brought yeah. back that I started when I was a kid. Well, listen, let's see a brief uh, a set of uh, his that he does about about the Air Force, I believe. Oh, let's okay. take let's take it to the uh, brief set. Here's one thing I learned about being in the military, and I'll pass it along to you civilian folks. It is tough as hell to get a job when you get out of the service, according to what you did while you were in, correct? A buddy of mine was a sniper. He had some problems when I employed him. But he made his own job openings. Now, here's what I'm doing. I don't want the judges to laugh. I said, uh, he's at the post office right now, as a matter of fact. I, uh, I worked on B-1 bombers, avionics, maintenance technician. That's electronics. See what I'm doing now? <laughs> this is as close to electronics as I get right now. I got out, I thought I had it made. I went looking for jobs. I said, what kind of experience do you have? I worked on B1 bombers. I said, okay. All right. Here's what you can do at our corporation. Pay attention. When this buzzer goes off, you're going to pull these fries up out of the grease right here. Just like that. <laughs> Shake them off. A guy in the Marines, he's in the drive through <laughs> Aim high. <laughs> so that's, when did you do this set? That was actually last year at the Savannah Comedy Review Comedy Competition. I judged it like I did this year. Yeah. And they did time while the tabulated votes and the last guest you have on here was at that show. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now, yeah. Um, yeah. were you the only judge or did they have other Oh, no, they had about, judge. if I was the only judge, the guy you got coming up, he, he would have probably won. won. <laughs> he would have at least bad. placed. Too bad. Yeah, he did good. Um, I think we had six. I think, I think we had six elements. Now, and that's a Savannah review. Savannah every year. Comedy Review. Every year. We At just Tom did Paris. the fifth yeah. one. Yeah. Tom P Thomas Paris is the owner. Yeah. So if the comics are watching, you need to go that next year. Yeah. Now, you have a gift for me? Yeah, I got a gift for uh, Dan Glazer here. He's doing a great job. Two years. He's two years plus in the show. Uh, I talked about this on Keeping It Real last week with uh, Dennis Aloya. But what this is, it's called uh, Smart Butt Comedy. They're the ones that came up with this. And it's... Uh, Playing deck, uh, yeah, cards, playing cards. Yeah. And e every card is a comedian's joke oh, wow. with the, the comedian's name and then their website on it. Famous comedians? No. Or local? No, it's all, no, from all over. <laughs> <all, from all laughs> the place. What was wrong with that question? No, I mean, well, because it's kind of like getting exposure for us guys. Oh, our, okay. You know, well, like, I did, like the show. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is 52 comics. 52 different jokes. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm the six of clubs in the deck. So if I would have thought you would have been the joker. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's why he's the host. <laughs> so anyway, um, <laughs> this is uh, going to be available. I just got them. Hot well, off the thank press. You, that's yours. Son. Thank you. You want to come to the Painted Pig this Saturday in Canton, and uh, you can get one of these. I've got some more with me. So if you want one, you can come to the Painted and Pig. And do you sell them or just give them out? No, I sell so, them. Okay. You got one free. Thank you, my son. Thank you. See, I bought a bunch of them, folks. So I just gave them out. Then I'd need, you know, spam or something because I wouldn't be able to afford, afford food. Now, now, Brian <laughs> has a very, very interesting radio show. It's called the BTS Radio Show. You have two shows. You have BTS Radio and then BTS On the on Road. On the Road is the video, uh -huh. uh, which I show what it's like to be a comedian on the road. Yeah, you know, at your different locations. And we're like actually shooting behind the scenes here. So if folks want to see behind the scenes of your yeah. show, oh, yeah, yeah. they can tune in. You, you shot me out. in the dressing room. Yeah. And then you followed me to the restaurant. That's going to be edited out. Though. Okay. <laughs>
Whoa. But anyway, what, Sorry, we, what we want to do, we want to see a little <laughs> bit of this BTS. Uh, well, first of all, let's go to the next video. And we want to hear the jingle and a little, few more, a little joke from uh, Brian. You know, when, I know a lot of comedians talk about divorce in their act, and I want to tell you that I, I hit it from a different angle. I don't talk about it from the man or the woman's point of view. I talk about it from the child's point of view. Because I think divorce is very confusing to children. My mom used to say, son, why can't you be more like your father? I said, all right, I'm leaving. <laughs> I want <laughs> I will, I will tell you about that. Yeah. First of all, that's a coincidence you played that. That's the joke that's in this deck. Oh, really? The cards. Now, they made me change it. They didn't make me, but they asked me if I could change it. When you read it, you'll see the change well, they you made. You should have put your face on the front of this. It wasn't my company. Oh, Here. okay. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> that was shot at the uh, Atlantis Resort uh, in the Bahamas. Right, right. That, uh, when I did the... Uh, when I did Joker's Wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's, yeah. It's very, very, it's very quality, I can tell. No, 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 not this. No, the video. You the know. video. The, but this is very quality. <laughs> okay. We'll see. We'll see. Now, um, we're going to talk a little about your BTS radio show and okay. show a clip from it. What gave you the idea to show Oh, this? BTS on the road? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, well, it's actually the BTS radio, and you can mention on the road, too, though. Go ahead. Uh, it's all together, really. Yeah. Well, well, what it was was I was shooting a series, a web series called Behind the Scenes at Kinetic Hi Fi, which was the radio station where I do my show. Right, right. And basically, one day, uh, you know, it just was the same thing over and over. So I ran out of <laughs> stuff to shoot one time, and it just so happened that I was going to Georgia to do a gig, uh -huh. and I thought, and I, we they put us up in a real nice house, and I thought, why don't I shoot this? And that's how it started. Exactly. So I shot a little thing. It was five minutes. And my dad and some other people saw it, and they went, those are great, man. Why don't yeah, you do that? So I said, okay, so now I, I still do it. Well, now we're going to show a little clip of him actually in the studio and the professionalism <laughs> that they <laughs> oh god they show in this shoot. Go ahead and show it. <laughs> oh, no. Just one sec. All right, I'll do a, a – I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend like I'm coming back in from a commercial, uh, girls, and then, uh, then that's when we'll go. Uh, when okay. he, he'll give me a signal, and then I'll pretend I'm coming in from a commercial. And then, uh, and basically, what we're going to talk about is uh, we'll hit briefly on y'all growing up in a uh, studio, and then uh, after that, what we'll do is uh, we'll go into how the show came into being and all that. Okay. Sounds good. You ready? Yeah, I'm gonna. Um, is it the angle you want? Okay. Uh, marker. Thanks. He just that that's impressive. <laughs> that's impressive. That's impressive. Uh, so um, now and we were interviewing Britney's Ghost Girls, by the way, who has a show on American network, Hearts Radio, which I hear yeah. is a very very good show. Yeah, very uh, good show. And they're good girls. Now we want to show another scene of what really goes on, the hard work they put behind the scenes. Oh boy, here Let's we show go. another the next clip. We got thirty. So we got about thirty-five minutes, right? So I'm good. Thirty seconds. All right, good. Because I can get a snack real quick. Get this thing. Come on, man. That's all it wanted. All I wanted is a baby. All right, And you got to kid me. Why would he do that? Crap, <laughs> man! Boyd! You are all nothing but business in that studio. <laughs> That's what's so amazing. That's a that's a skit that uh, Boyd, the guy that was sitting there with like a deer in the headlights, like Al said, uh, he wrote that. He wanted me to do that. He goes, that's funny. just we're gonna have an ongoing thing where I put f food in the freezer and it always pisses you off. Oh, I was man. like, what? The? Okay, whatever. 
<laughs> well, listen, uh, we want to show one more because you've had the honor of having Johnny Van Zant and, and Oh, yeah, my God. I couldn't believe it. And that he was just Mike in town. Did. Yeah, yeah, they just did a big concert. With Sting? Mm hmm. And who else? Uh, there's a. Oh gosh, you it, was it was big. Donnie from 38 Special came out of retirement. Oh, for yeah. This and, yeah. Let's play this endorsement, very brief endorsement. Hey, everybody, this is Johnny Van Zant of Leonard Skinner. You're watching BTS on the road with Brian T. Sherwood on American Hearts Radio West. Brian, I yeah, want to thank amazing. you. That, that's an honor. Yeah, it is an honor. honor. Thanks, Mike, for doing that, Michael Loya. But thank you for having me. Thank on you. Again, that was a, it. Was a lot of fun. Yeah. Come on the show again. Oh, I will. I want you to do some pole dancing or something. Oh yeah. Now, now what we want to bring to the stage is a young inventor to uh, the stage. Play that music. A young inventor who um, his name is Mr. Joel. Blazer, do you spell your name G-L-A-Z-E-R like me, or I do actually. You do. It's, it's Pleasure a, to be on the show. Just happy to be a coincidence. Isn't it? This young, this is a young inventor. He's been designing uh, inventions since he was a little boy. He has a whole book of inventions, and he has a particular one right now that's on Kickstarter. And tell us about it, Joel. It's called the Coin Caddy. Um, it's a spring-loaded coin holder that fits on your keychain. You can fit five credit cards on the rear. Um, there'll be little credit card bumpers on the sides on the completely finished version. We have it right now on Kickstarter. Um, you can actually visit coincaddy.com. It holds over $2.50 worth of coins. Okay, so it's a keychain, a dollar credit card holder, and a key uh, a coin holder. And let's watch a brief video of the Kickstarter. Now we have your. Uh, now one thing interesting, you got to call someone who wanted to make it for Euro, the Euro, right? Yes. So we we're going to produce one for Euro coins as well. Very good. And now we have your Kickstarter poster up. Okay. And you're up to how much money now? Around twenty three hundred. And what's your goal? Sixty five hundred. And where can people donate to it if they are or invest in it if they like? They can just go to CoinCaddy.com and uh, back the project, and it's kind of a way of pre-ordering. Okay. And um, and uh, your goal is six thousand, and you're on the, your way. I'm on my way. I'm about one third of the way through. I'm not allowed to say this is my son, but this is my son. <laughs> thank you very much, Joel Glazer, for coming on. And right now we want to bring to the pro. Thank you. Come again. With your next adventure, we'll have you on again. All right. Son. Okay. And now we want to bring to the stage a young man. This comedian uh, is an inspired comedian that walks the line between truth and reality. His apathetic delivery provides a performance for patrons of design described as an emotional roller coaster of laughter and insight. His comic intuition brings a fresh perspective for all to enjoy. He also is the first person on Comics on Parole. So we want to welcome to the desk, Mr. Joel Byers. Woo! How are you doing, my son? How are you doing? Joel? I'm so nervous. You're so nervous. All this you've grown beautiful out there. You've grown a lot since. Uh, in fact, this this is the same backdrop as when you were on the show. Because you oh. almost fell off the window the no, first time. Cities, I should have yeah. shown a clip of the first show because you had a mustache. The then. sunset's but, so romantic. But we have a. So what's been going on? It's been going on with me. Yeah, have you? Uh, you've got, been to Gotham. Yes. And performed in Gotham. Tell yeah, us about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went up to New York a couple months ago and did a couple shows up there. So yeah. So it's good to bring a little Southern hospitality up there. You went to Gotham. Was that intimidating or was it? Uh... Um, at first, but then it's just another comedy show at the end of the day. And now, are there? But what I understood, there were agents. There were supposed to be agents in the audience. There may have been. They did not reach out to me. <laughs> um, I must have missed that memo. Uh, we'll say I had are, a great set. Are you going to go back again? Yeah, I'll definitely go back. And yeah, you yeah. tour while well, all your friends, comic friends, they left. You stayed in New York and toured at some other clubs. Yeah, I went around for the week. I have a cousin that lives up in New York, so uh, I went around and went to a bunch of the op different open mics and everything and how is new york compared to atlanta tell us the difference oh man as a comic 
the energy level in New York is crazy. Right. Like, I mean, just walking around, because I walked everywhere, right. pretty much, or yeah, yeah. took transit, and just the city is buzzing at, like, four in the morning, there'll be people out and about, and the comedy scene, I mean, I was doing shows at, like, 2.30 in the afternoon. So oh, like, my God. There was one day I did five shows at oh my one God. day. So it's, I mean, New York is the mecca of stand-up comedy, but Atlanta has a great scene going on here, oh, too. We're the third funniest... Um, Comedy city in the country, voted by the University of Colorado. Voted by University of Colorado. Yeah. So they're not even here, and they know we're. Yeah, funny. yeah, they were the third wow. funniest. But wow. listen, what we want to do now? You have a girlfriend now. I do have a girlfriend. Now. Before you had a girlfriend, you used to do dating sites like Match.com. I mean, if you want to call Facebook a dating. site. No, no, I you guess. did dating sites. Let's take it to this next clip. <laughs> Before blacksmithpeople.com. I was really just a lost soul out in the wilderness of the world. I was going to sites I really don't want to mention. You know, not finding love, I'll say that much, with anyone but myself. I'm normally attracted to the guys that are really sultry, the, the we will survive, the, the overcome the white man. Yeah, them type of guys. Uh, she is blind. I am visually impaired, but thankfully, black to meet people does not discriminate. I knew it was love at first sight, uh, just with the first message, you know, she sent me something, said, you know, what do you look like? I knew I had a real African warrior when he pulled it out. He was definitely a mandingo from the test. He passed with flying colors. This is how blacks meet people. This is how blacks meet people.com. Uh oh. Okay. Um, now, of course, you're living with a girl now, a young lady now. Who? Yeah, yeah, how did yeah. you meet her? Uh, we met in college, you know, that whole expensive vacation. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, I like to date more than actually commit, because marriage scares me. I know you're married. Is she watching right? the show? Is she watching the show? Yeah. She is, yeah. You know the goal is for her to get married. You understand that. <laughs> well, I mean, she'll propose when she's ready. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Listen, let's see a little bit of Joel set when he was younger and had a mustache. The tap thing. Hey, this is Christian with Tap, and we're here at the Punchline Comedy Club with comedian and tap artist Joel Byers. How you doing, Joel? Greetings, greetings, greetings. Thank you. Thanks for walking out, ma'am. I can see you. Uh, you aren't worth it. Showed her. It's cool. Is she worth it, sir? I don't know. Has she put out? Is it yours? <laughs> Whose is that? This <laughs> man needs to yank on that leash. <laughs> wow, that went south very quickly. I, uh... <laughs> oh man, I had some great Super Bowl jokes and uh, she ruined them. Oh no, Super Bowl 10 weeks ago. <laughs> Topical, look out. <laughs> That's good though. Now what I notice about your humor, you 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 have a set but you also interact with the crowd. That's why I want to show you, you interact yeah. with the crowd a lot and you make mm -hmm. a lot up as you go too, right? Yeah, I try to be in the moment as much as possible. Right. And just kinda it's always good to have jokes prepared. Right. But I mean if something happens in the moment, I just try to roll with it. And it makes the set a lot longer if you need to go which is I'm yeah. not even kidding. If you need to set a little, go, a little longer, oh, you yeah. can make it go a lot longer that way. Yeah, I mean I've done as much as just take a nap on stage if need be, yeah. <laughs> I remember you used to massage the walls all the time. Remember you used to Oh I still do. You still do? Okay. You he would just good. examine the walls like I feel like Godzilla right now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, but he is uh, Joel is, a building. He's great at his set, but he just can ad lib and make things up at his goal as he goes very well. Mm -hmm. Now, you also have an open mic that you do, which yes. is 
Yes, uh, Funny Monkey Comedy Carnival at Java Monkey, Decatur, We're, Georgia. Yeah, and how's that going? Oh, it's going great. We just had our three-year anniversary in July. So oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, And it's every other Wednesday, 9 p.m. It's a lot of fun. It really, and you yeah. get a lot of college kids there, too, right? Yeah, yeah, we have a big following with the colleges. Emory's right there, and um, Agnes Scott as well. well. Let's play a little clip of that. Uh. Ooh. Thank you so much. This is exactly what I had in mind if I was on death row. Just three people texting on Facebook. <laughs> what, it, what is that, a go phone? That's embarrassing. I tell you, if uh, we took all these chairs out, this show would be sold out. So, well, I think this is going to be fun. Okay. I'm so now, funny. Now, notice the picture we have. Yes. You in your underwear with women. Uh, the women. <laughs> there. Explain this to us. Oh, man. Uh, a local comic, Joe Pettis, uh -huh. does a great monthly uh, show at the Village Theater called the Underwear Comedy Party. Right. And it's where comics perform in their underwear. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's so wild. But this was actually a picture uh, post-game of us all together. Now, this this show is also touring. Yeah, now, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has a whole tour. He's he's doing a lot of big He's things making some money. Yeah, yeah. About that. He has mm -hmm. not asked me to be in my underwear. Has uh, he asked you out? No. no. Yeah, I wouldn't probably. do it if, I, <laughs> yeah, if he did. But it'd be too easy. <laughs> I might wear a negligee or something. But uh, So are you going to be asked to be in that again? Um, I mean, possibly. Now, now you could take that away. Now, I, I don't book the show. No, but now, you, uh, I want to briefly, uh, you did open up for Louis Anderson. We're at? Yes, uh, Bonkers in Roswell. In five, that was an experience, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was great. They did it actually in the ballroom uh -huh. of the uh, facility. Oh really? And I, I hosted for it, and then he uh, he was the headliner. That was I was impressed because that's two years ago. What? And how long have you done yeah. comedy now? Uh, it'll be five years in February. Five? Oh, what? That long? You're at that five year wall. There's oh, a yeah. five year wall and a ten year wall, right, Brian? Mm -hmm. Oh wow! You're on your way. Well, you're on your way. Well, we're let's build a the wall. The big break is kind of every <laughs> night. Go to bed and visualize yourself up on the big screen. Or on mm. TV, America's Got Talent, or I'm on the big screen right now. Well, that's, that's true. Hey, this Mom, is your big break. I made it. Listen, <laughs> there's a little video I want to show. Another video I've always liked of the Funny Monkey. This was the two-year anniversary. Oh, okay. Let's show oh, this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, that's a great video. Now, are you going to do a, thir a third talented. year? When was your third year anniversary? Uh, July. Okay, did you do an anniversary show? We did an anniversary show. It was it packed? Because when I went to that one, it was packed. Oh, it was a great show. We had Clayton English close it out. Oh, well, Landry well. came to the one I was with. Landry's done one as well. I've had Rodney Perry close it out. So oh, wow. I always try to make sure the anniversary show has some solidified names on you it. you well. got to go to this open mic. It's a, it's really, it's a great coffee mm -hmm. shop, too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, now, where can people find you on the Internet? 
Web, oh. web, web, uh, Facebook and uh, the internet. Website. I'm yeah. so glad Inter you, you internet. I'm surprised you know what the internet is. AOL <laughs> dial up. <laughs> yeah, com. yeah, all that. Yeah, it's a uh, Joel Byers comedy on everything: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And I just opened up. Have a joke about Goodwill. Go and how I'm a good millionaire. Just <laughs> yeah. just open up an eBay store called the Good Millionaire. Uh, you tell us about it. Yeah, it's where I um, I sell clothes, vintage clothing. Yeah. For a profit. So support me. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Where do you get your clothes at? It's called Good Willionaire. Well, I can't give away all my secrets. It's a recipe. But it's an eBay store called Good Willionaire. Yeah. Where the clothes are so cheap you don't feel bad stealing them. Are you looking forward to the holidays? Of course. Uh, I hate it when the holidays start because that's when I have to start all my holiday shoplifting. But <laughs> anyway, listen, best, Dan. thank you so much, thank Joel. Thank you so much. And what? Don't take it away. Brian, get up here. Joel, get up here. And Vanessa, get up here. We're doing the traditional Comics on Parole Boogaloo. Take it away. They will be here. And remember, wherever you go, there you will be. Thank you. <laughs>